This video is brought to you by SoccerPro.com. Be sure to visit SoccerPro.com for all the latest soccer gear at everyday low prices with no membership fees. Don't forget to use coupon code SR4U at checkout for $10 off a $75 purchase plus free shipping within the US. Hey guys, Josh from SoccerReviewsForYou.com and this is a video kind of talking about a touchy subject and one that's very very popular amongst my co the commenters and I get so many questions about this and kind of statements even saying that oh I used to wear let's say a laser and I switched to Addy Zeros and now I'm the fastest player on my team or um, I want to get this shoe let's say again let's say a laser about 10 ounce shoe or let's use a Puma King for this time um, but I don't like how much it weighs it weighs 9 ounces that's too heavy is it, is it going to slow me down um, the simple answer to that question is no it isn't um, just to start off this video there is a big difference between being faster and feeling faster. That is a huge difference. That's that's a huge kind of statement to make, but a lot of people don't can't process that. They don't realize that. They just they see the marketing, they see the name Speed Boot, they may, they dub these these shoes Speed Boots, and they are the most desired shoes on the market right now because who who wouldn't want a lightweight shoe, right? It makes sense. Lighter equals faster. But in reality, in the game of soccer, it's not exactly the case. Um, I kind of did some research on this thing, and the only real studies that there are showing if a lightweight shoe can make you faster, there definitely are studies on this, but they're, the, the results are probably disappointing, and a lot of this might disappoint you. Um, the studies are essentially on marathon runners running races of 15 kilometers or more, and it's that impact of how much difference a lightweight shoe can make on a 15 kilometer race. Um, let's say a high end running shoe that weighs about, let's say 14, 15 ounces, much heavier than pretty much any soccer shoe. And this is a running shoe that's really custom made, really well, really supportive, and provides everything that a runner needs to really run for 15 kilometers. Because that's a, a long way to run, especially in, in one basically one ses session. So you're going to be running at a pretty quick pace for several hours, three, four, five hours, just depending on how fast you're going. And basically the study was, should you shave off four, five, six ounces off of your shoe, uh, will it dictate how much, will it affect the final time of your race? And the results are pretty much the same, that yes, it will have an effect on your race, um, but not a huge effect. It's going to you might shave off a couple of seconds, which at, at the end of the day could win you the race. But you got to look at this in comparison to a soccer game where you're not running at a steady pace. You're, you're, you're sprinting in bursts. You're jogging at times. You're walking at times. You're standing at times. Um, it's always different paces. This lightweight theory kind of thing doesn't really play as much of a part as far as making you faster. Um, as far as making you faster over... A, a let's say a three second sprint it's just not going to happen it's not scientifically it doesn't make sense it's just not enough of a gap it's not a long enough period of time it's not a long enough distance to travel to truly have an effect over a shoe that let's say weighs two ounces and also this is the example that i use of like a 15 14 ounce shoe to let's say a nine ounce running shoe that's a huge variance that's that's six seven ounces that's there's no there's no difference there's not that big of a variance between the lightest shoe which on is currently the Pele Trinity which weighs 5.6 ounces to about the heaviest shoe which weighs about now the higher end shoes if you're not counting the Copa Mundial it's only it's only about 10 and a half ounces so that's only about that's that's hardly four <laughs> that's about four ounces of difference which is in theory is pretty much nothing especially on your feet. Of course a lightweight shoe is going to provide that that lightweight feel. It's less weight to lift and I understand that you take 800 steps in the game. Obviously if, if you're lifting up uh, less weight you're going to be less fatigued. I may, I understand that completely. But you have to look at the same there's there's another side to this and that you're giving up a lot in your soccer shoe to have that lightweight. And I'm not against lightweight shoes at all. I think it's a great idea and I think it's only helping soccer shoes. It's what, why not? If we can have the same quality with at a lighter weight, why not? It makes it it's kind of a win-win situation. But you have to understand that you sacrifice stuff. You sacrifice rigidity. You sacrifice comfort. 
Um, you sacrifice that solid feel. You sacrifice durability. There's a lot that gets sacrificed through shedding weight. Um, it's just something to realize. I mean, I did a little research on kind of sprinter shoes. A super high-end sprinter shoe, let's use the shoe, for example, that Hussein Bolt wore, currently the fastest man in the world. A 100-meter track spike that he wears weighs 5.8 ounces. That's not including the metal spikes that go on the shoes. Throw on those metal spikes, you got about you got a shoe that weighs about seven ounces. So that's heavier than the lightest weight shoe. And this is a shoe that's only being used for 100 meters over a period of nine seconds. That is, you would think that a shoe would be a shoe that's being used for that little amount of time would be lighter, especially since we can create a shoe, a soccer shoe that has spikes, an upper, laces and fits well to weigh five points, basically 5.8 ounces, the same weight. Why wouldn't a sprinter shoe want it? Why wouldn't a sprinter want their shoe to be lighter? The reason for that is, like I said, you have to have some kind of substance. Substance. There's a feedback in these shoes. When you flex the shoe, you want that feedback. You want that stiffness. It's, it's, it's what makes a soccer shoe a soccer shoe. It's the reason why you buy them. It's, if, if there was no reason to buy a soccer shoe for this re for the stiffness and the feel, you wouldn't buy a soccer shoe, you'd play in running shoes. It's just how it goes. Um, another, from a physics standpoint, what's, what has a bigger effect on how fast you're gonna be able to travel is not so much the weight, but it's the friction between your foot and the ground. Um, that's why you see all these different stud patterns. When you're running, you're essentially pushing off of the ground. You're planting your foot, you're digging it in. The spikes allow you to dig in, increasing your friction between the ground, and you're essentially pushing this way to drive yourself forward. If there's nothing there, if you were running on flats, the whole reason why you wear spikes, it's, it's, it allows you to run faster. It's, it's so much more important than being lightweight. It's how much friction you have between the ground and your foot. Um, I, hope you guys, I hope I still have you guys uh, listening here, but that's basically what I'm getting at is that a lightweight shoe Yes, in theory, scientifically, it can make you faster. It's gonna shave seconds off of your time. If you're running for three, four, five hours straight over a super long distance, you're gonna save a couple seconds off of your time. But in the game of soccer that's played in bursts, that's where the element of speed is gonna last for two, three, five seconds at the longest on a full field sprint, that's where, that's where you're gonna, that's where this kind of speed element comes in into these breeze boots, but it's just not a long enough distance or a long enough time to really have an effect or to create an advantage over a shoe that weighs a little bit more. Um, I hope you guys understand that. I know I'm still gonna get some comments kind of opposing me, but I feel like I explained this pretty well. Let me know if you guys wanna know, if you guys like this kind of kind of scientific, this theory thing behind soccer shoes, because it's, it's kind of interesting to me in how soccer shoes kind of relate into science or even other sports, why Why are soccer shoes becoming such a lightweight thing? Why, what is driving this lightweight? I just, I don't want people to get tricked and I just think you guys should kind of do a little bit more research before you kind of buy into this whole lightweight thing because I think there are lots of other shoes that get overlooked because they're not lightweight and uh, they really shouldn't. But there you go guys, um, if you're interested in checking out any of the reviews on my website, the link's in the description to my to soccerreviewsforyou.com. There's basically reviews on all kinds of soccer shoes, um, pretty much every shoe on the market, high end, and we're starting to do some takedowns now. Um, I'll leave some annotations in the top left to some other informative videos I have on uh, on YouTube. Um, anyways, guys, if you guys want to comment, rate, subscribe, um, really helps me out. Also, if you have any questions not related to the video, go ahead and ask them on my Facebook page, links in the description of that as well. Also, don't forget to go check out the Super Deal section on my website. There's a newly added European section, so uh, definitely go check that out. Links in the description. Leave a link in the description straight to there as well. And as always, guys, thanks for watching.